Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. And we set the music off and we are going to get started. Welcome, welcome, welcome back for another exclusive interview. Yes, you have joined us for the Eight Queens Roundtable Leadership Symposium. And I am so excited. I have Dr. Nicole Peters here with us today. Hi. Before we get started, let me just do a quick introduction. Again, for those of you that may not know who I am, my name is Jacqueline Kabai Harrison, and I am your host for Eight Queens Roundtable Leadership Symposium, as well as Eight Queens Roundtable Show and Podcast. I am also the executive producer of the Eight Queens Roundtable channel on the one and only Women Win Network, which streams on Roku and Amazon Fire TV, reaching 100 million homes. So let me just say this. If you are looking to explode your visibility, increase your credibility, and really make your brand well-known, let's have a conversation. Make sure you follow me at, on Facebook at Realizing Your Potential. The number is one, two, three. Or as you see at the bottom, you can just go to my website. Now, again, we are doing, the name of this particular symposium is Born to Lead, Awakening the Leader Within. And as you have seen, I have had back-to-back -back powerhouses talking about leadership. And I have one sitting with me right now. And this is Dr. Nicole Peters. Dr. Peters, go ahead and introduce yourself to the ladies. Let them know a little bit more about you. I think they already know who you are, but tell them again anyway. Let them know uh, who you serve and how you serve. And just tell us a little bit about yourself. No problem. Thank you so much, Jacqueline Queen Six, for having me on this amazing Queen Roundtable Leadership Symbolism. I am a fabulous today and honored to just be here with you and the president of you. You're amazing and you rock. But I am Dr. Nicole Peters. I am the CEO, founder of Believe in Your Dreams Television, Publishing, and Academy. I'm also the CEO and founder of Women of Love, Power, Respect, where I teach other women to snatch back their power and believe in themselves and know that true love is not abuse. I also is a, a, a I am a professional life coach. I take that so serious. But I'm also an advocate for domestic violence to teach women that once you realize who you are and whose you are, and when you know you're a child of God, you will protect your temple like never before. You will be loved and never be able to go into any type of darkness with any kind of man because you're going to just love yourself even more. So that's some of the accolades. A little bit more, I have my Ph.D., and leadership and biblical studies. And I just wanted to know more of God and want to get more of that information info milk and know that word, Jacqueline. So that's who I am. That's who I stand for. I know the power of God is in us inside of us all. And I teach other women to know that and to believe in your dreams and know that when you believe in your dreams, anything is possible for those that believe. That's right. Amen. Amen to that. Amen. Again, I am so honored to have you here. And so let me, as you know, uh, Dr. Peters, we're talking about leadership. So first, I'd like to open up with when did you first begin to see yourself as a leader? That'll, you know, this is just to kind of let the ladies know a little bit about your leadership journey. My leadership journey actually started when I was younger. You know, Jacqueline, when you grow up in a low poverty area in the project, you get to be surrounded by so many children, right? So many people. And you learn how to serve each other because you all you got. We are all we each other had because we was always left out as a product of our environment, right? Mostly everybody that's in that type of area, come from that type of area, they have this mindset that we're just product of our environment. So I would serve from home. Then, you know, like when my mom would go and buy my monthly groceries, my juices and everything, I would literally give them away. I would literally sit on the porch and tell some of my friends, you know what? You know, you you might not have something to eat, but we have something to eat. I would take my allowances, my allowances, and I tell my, my mom to buy sandwich meat and bread with that to help help my some of my friends who didn't have food to eat on the weekend. So I started serving at a young age. But as I got older and I went through some things, some traumatic experiences and went through being around the wrong people and ended up going the wrong way in life, I knew that there was another purpose 
on my life to help other people. If I can get out of it and if I can break through and if I can come unstoppable and if I can have success, you can too. So I took my leadership to a whole nother level with helping other people to come out and be an international speaker. Now I'm speaking all over the world to be able to travel and be able to show other people, look, it doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter what they say about you. It's what God say about you. And that powerful source that's in you is greater than anything that ever come your way. So that's when I took leadership to the heart. I promised God if he just healed me of some of the things I was going through. Jacqueline, I was on 14 medication. Now I'm down to three. Hallelujah. I'm only down to three medication because I believe in what God told me that he was going to heal me. Jehovah Raffle, right? So after I got healed, I said, it's other women out there that need to be healed. Because when you're in certain kind of pain, you a lot of people want to kill themselves. It becomes a mental issue because you're going through pain. You see, you can't work like you've never been before. So I was like, I need leadership to help women to know they can keep going through if they're going through domestic violence. Leadership is needed for people who are going through pain to think they still can't be a six-figure, seven-figure um, income earner. Leadership was needed for those that they'll still think they stuck and stagnant, think they're a product of their environment, not a product of God. So it was all the way around just being a servant and everything that I took my leadership to the next level. Okay. So how long would you say you've been in a leadership position? I know, now, do you come from a corporate background? I, I, yeah. I mean, okay, you do. Okay. I have, I have came, I used to work for three different companies. One company I used to work for was AT&T. We all know AT&T. I actually was, I started off with a third party administrator and the girl, the lady who actually was my senior account manager was the one who started believing in me. Like, girl, do you know who you have in you? The wisdom that you have. God loves you. And every day she would come with saying something about God. And I was like, wait a minute now. So it started off with at and When she left at and she started working for this big medical company called American Life and Health. And she called me. She said, you good with at and I said, yeah, it's great, but I'm missing you. You were such a great supervisor and you were such a great manager. She was like, well, I want you to come over here and be my senior account manager with American Life and Health. And she said, and I want you to run the durable medical supplies and equipment company. We turned that company into a, from a $50,000 company into a $2.5 million company because I ended up getting contracts selling deals to get hospital beds with, from big hospitals and different type of um, contracts that started getting for home help to get other people into the, you know, into their home health services and what they do a, do a DME product. So, yes, I had a corporate background as well. And then all of a sudden I knew I did I no longer want to do corporate in corporate anymore. You know when God is ready for you to lead the C Corp. And I was ready to lead the C Corp because I wanted to have the in self-employment. I wanted to do my own because I knew that was my calling anyway. So after I got sick and you know, you know, when you get sick, your job can their place their place somebody with you instantly. And when my supervisor left, the other man, he replaced somebody in my place. So I would have came back, but it wasn't the same. And I said, God, what are you telling me? What are you telling me? And after I wrote my first book and I finished it, I knew then. I said, God is telling me to walk in my purpose. I went to one event and I spoke at that event and it's been with me creating my own business ever since then. And that was Ashley Jacqueline in 2009. 2009. Okay. And you know what? I know you have the television network. Is that where is that where you came up with the name from? Because you mentioned about the the uh, previous supervisor and believe in me. Is that how is that kind of how that name came about or? Well, the name came about with Ashley from school. Okay. We had career day at school. And when we was at when we had school career day, we saw we saw scientists, we saw you know different teachers, mm -hmm. you know principal, firemen, you know everybody that come to the school for career day, career day. And it was this author that came right. Mm -hmm. And I was having a bad day, Jacqueline, before school even started. I wanted to jump in that river at a young age. I wanted to kill myself because I had just heard my grandmother saying that, hey, "Don't you think it's time to tell Nikki, baby, I got congested heart failure and I'm gonna be dying?" And I was like, my grandmother was my shero. That's my Giro. She was everything to me, and to be losing her. It devastated my soul. So before career day, I was ready to jump in that river. But my friend was like, come on, Nicole, we got career day today. So everybody in class, after we saw every, you know, after we saw all the different career, people in their careers um, from, you know, police officers and everywhere. And but the, the lady that came in there and read that book, she rocked my world, Jacqueline. She turned my frown into a smile. She turned my sadness into joy. And I was like, oh, I want to be an author and speaker like her. She rocked my world. 
And I'll never forget how my teacher looked at me. She didn't believe in me for the simple fact is I had to take Title I in reading comprehension in English. It was my worst subject. So saying you want to go into something with speaking and writing, she felt like, oh, I, you know, like, won't you do something in math and science? Because I made all A's and B's in math. I rocked those science projects. And when it comes to numbers, your girl is just, she, she, I'm, I was awesome with, with that. But I was like, I, you know, at the class, that's what she told me. And I was like, you know what? I said, my teacher didn't believe me. And I remember running home crying. And my grandmother was wondering where I was, like, why everybody home? And I wasn't home. And she knew that I wasn't gone yet. And she realized I had heard her conversation mm -hmm. and that I was heartbroken before I left. So she was looking for me because she didn't know if I was, you know. So when I got back to that bridge, Jacqueline, she was right there. She said, what's wrong with you? Why are you crying? I said, in career day, my teacher said I couldn't believe in my, you know, I couldn't do what I want to do. She didn't believe in me. And my grandmother was one of those all the women, you know how they had the, the house coats with the two pockets on the side, and they had those little mini Bibles back in the days. And she pulled out that Bible. She said, "What do my nine Mark nine twenty three tell you? Did Mark nine twenty three tell you anything is possible for those that believe? If you got that possibility in you, and you believe the words that God say, hold your head up. You can go anyway. So that's where believing came from." And you know, um, and then that's when I formed Believing Your Dreams Publishing. I had publishing, I published people from that made little bitty money to millions of dollars. Then after that, I started wanting to tell their story. I started working for a corporation again, which was called Voice of America. I was a host on their TV network. And I was hosting different shows from Brandy in the Red, from Rebecca um, um, Empowerment Women Save Lives. And I was just always on there being, you know, like NBC being a, uh, being a moderator and host. So after that, I was like, when COVID came, I said, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and start. I'm going to show people how to start their own show, even though I had already started the Motivational Lounge. So that's how the TV network became a part of it. And by me knowing people in the doors, that's how I was able to get contracts, not just a little, you know, a little regular account. I was able to go out there and get me some developers account and, and create it where other people can have an access to be able to, around the board, make money. You know how YouTube, or you see these young people making all this money just off one channel? I wanted to be where if they had Samsung, they can make money. If they had Roku, if they had Amazon, if they had Google, if they had Chromecast, if they had app, you know, Apple, so many of them that they'll be able to make unlimited money and change their household with making generational wealth, you know, for our great great children. So yes, that's how I, that's how I went with corporate, and I never had to look back because once I started believing in my dreams and I knew I had God, the power of God is my source. And he said his words will happen if you ask and you shall receive. And I asked God, I said, God, even though I done been through some things, I said, but I'm believing in you. Like my grandmother told me, believe that what I'm going to do if I'm going to believe that teacher, I'm going to believe those credits or I'm going to believe the power source, the God, the redeemer, the rock that said that I can have it. If I'm, if I'm if, if, if just a, pos a must to see the faith, Jacqueline. And that's what I did. And I took my career. It wasn't easy. I tell people all the time, don't think becoming an entrepreneur is easy. It's not easy, but it's worth it. Keep going in that grit. Keep having that perseverance. And that's what I did. And I created Believe Me Your Dreams to become a million dollar income empire. You know, you are such an inspiration to me. Oh, I mean, you are me, and I know you're an inspiration to so many women. And that's what it's all about. You know what I mean? And it's just, I, I love the energy you bring. You know, you're very transparent. You're very uh, personable. You know what I mean? It's like who you see is who you is who you get. You know, some people, yeah. it's so easy to create this online persona, you know. And then when people actually engage with you, you be like, you can really tell that that you're, you know, that when you, who you see on the videos is their representative, so to speak. And yeah. this is the real them. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I appreciate you showing up with so much power and just so much passion. You know what I mean? And being your authentic self. I really appreciate that. Um, and you kind of touched on this, but I always like to ask the women, like, who are your inspirations or, or who inspired you? Who are your mentors? I know your grandmother was a, was a big mentor. Any Anyone else you want to mention? Like, oh, oh, I know. Wait, I'm sorry. One more thing. I know we don't have a whole lot of time. I want to know growing up, because this has come up often, is that when we look around, like some of the women that are in corporate, when they look around the table, they don't they don't see people that look like them. Mm. And some of them growing up, we didn't have an opportunity to see our mothers, our grandmothers, our aunts, our cousins in positions of leadership. So I'm mm -hmm. always interested to know, like, like what what did you see when you were coming up? 
in terms of mentors and, and as well as when you began to be an established uh, business owner? Well, my apostle, who was the lady who was my account manager, she was the first one because she was like, baby, she was like, I was like, why every time you come here every day, you want to talk about God? I don't want, I lost my grandmother. I lost my father. God let me down. She said, girl, God ain't never let you down. She, he said, she was, she'll tell me God loves you and I love you too. And there's nothing you can do about that. She said, one day you're going to be talking about God just as much as I'm, she stayed on me. So that was my first inspiration of my mentor. She was so amazing and um, she really inspired me. But of course, my favorite was rest in peace, Maya Angelou. That is one of my greatest mentors ever. I love some Maya Angelou. Um, uh, Coretta Scott King, um, Mary Bethon, those are some of the people that I look up to. For my earthly angels that still living now, of course, like I said, my pastor Pamela, I love me some um, Dr. Cheryl Wood and, you know, her vocalized Academy really helped me. And I love her, you know, I, um, I, I, you know, regardless of the fact people always say, well, you, you know, you, you, you some people be going a separate way. We're not going our separate way. We both just got a mission to do. And people got to understand that is how collaboration goes. Right. But I cannot take for the fire and the belly that she have in her. For Dr. I mean, for Dr. Karen Cherry, and yes, she's a doctor now. She's receiving her honorary. Dr. Yolanda Jerry, of course, the queen, the Keita Davis. I started surrounding myself by some great mentors, like people like you. You know, like I tell people all the time, I'm I'm just like you. And I got to keep it real. I can't stand people who come on Facebook and social media mm -hmm. and everything and act like, oh, today is a beautiful sunny day. Everybody don't have a beautiful sunny day. I don't care if you guys Not serious. every day. No. Yeah. <laughs> Because money do not make you happy. You're going to go through some things regardless. If you got children, you got family in this world, you're going to go through some things sometimes. So I, um, as far as, as, far as other mentors, it's the, oh, of course, and Michelle Obama, that first lady right there, she put some fire in me, honey. And Viola Davis, those women there really show me you can be who you want to be. You know, watching um that new um. What is it called? A new series with the first ladies on there and saw how Michelle Obama demanded to be in that room and how she was going to control that room. Really let me know why I always looked up to her ever since she came on the scene because she just who she are and she's amazing. And she rock. But, you know, um, Avengers, Patsy Cole, you know, those are some people that I really do look look up to it. Anybody. I don't care. If they got an inspiring word, encouraging word, I'll be there right there to listen because we all got something to give. We all got greats and inspiration and talents and gifts in us. So everybody, that every woman that's keeping on going and keeping on thriving and striving and standing that great standing position, they all inspire me. They all are my mentors, Jacqueline. Yes, 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 yes. You know who the who comes to my mind? Remember they did that Netflix special on uh, Madam C.J. Walker. Oh yeah, remember oh, that? Yeah. I was yeah. so. I mean, I was just floored. You know, yes. but the, but the thing of it is, we all, like you said, there's enough out there for everybody. Yes, and us being able to come together. I mean, and the thing of it is, we could be doing the exact same thing, but you're gonna bring something different that I'm gonna bring to the table. But there, there's enough for everybody, and we all deserve a seat at the table. You know, so that's why I'm just I'm also thankful for you all and everyone actually taking a seat at the table and just being open and honest. And, and the the plan or the reason for this is because I truly believe that we all have those innate leadership abilities. It's just a matter of bringing it out, bringing it to the forefront. You know, and this has come up a lot too before. Like I know I grew up in the area. It was like, well, you're supposed to be seen and not heard. You know, mm -hmm. what I mean? a lot of us, you know, we we feel boastful when we talk about any sort of accomplishment or kind of pat ourselves on the back, or we're comfortable with being behind the scenes or backstage. You know what I mean? But we never want to accept any any accomplish any um, accomplishments or a mm -hmm. job well done, much less come out to the forefront and you know actually speak or be seen you know but it's time out for all of that you know i want women to know that you can refine you can bring out and or refine those leadership skills so having said that what just give us maybe three characteristics that you think a good leader should have 
the main thing a good leader should have is a good heart okay. a good heart Jacqueline if you do not have a good heart to where you want to help people break chains no matter what they going through you still gonna love them because you can't love someone you can't be a leader because you because you see somebody making a million dollars and they're great fit for you to, to help you with your bank account or if you see that this person oh this person popularity so i'm gonna be a great leader to her you gotta want to be a great leader to everybody that comes your way that won't that you know that the power to discern- of course use your power discernment right the gift of discern- the spirit of discernment but at the same time to me you gotta have a great heart to me, you have to have a mindset, a mindset to know who you are, who you are, and know that the enemy going to come to you because when you're in a leader position, the enemy hate that. But you got to know that no weapon form against you should prosper and that everybody you touch going to turn to gold because you are not in no chicken warfare. You in an eagle warfare. So you helping fly sore with eagles. So you got to have that mindset is that you don't stand behind me. When I'm as a leader, my team will tell you the main thing I tell them on the Believe in Dreams Network. I'm with our um, media coaching that we do. I say, you do not, if I'm your coach, I'm your leader, but you're not behind me. You're standing on the side of me. I want you to go ahead of me because great leaders teach other people how to lead just as good as them. And they don't get um, jealous and envy about it. You know, so many leaders will say they want to be your leader, but when they see that you got power, when they see that you can bring a, a great word just like them, or they see that you can be just as good as them, they'll back off of you. I done had some coaches to do me like that, and I still give them a shout out and everything and tell you they what they mean for me, but I have been hurt by a few people. But at the same time, that hurt helped me to be a better leader. And the third one is, is do you have the time to 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 be able to have a plan for those people that you are leading? Do you have time to show them the way without making it seem like they're getting on your nerves or nagging you and not have a judgmental mental judgmental attitude towards them because one thing about it hurt people hurt people break people break people um depress you know people that's going through the people that's wounded they put band-aids on other people you know um so i learned to the the my three things would be is have a good heart my other thing would be to have the mindset to know what you're capable of doing and know that the enemy gonna come at you because if your enemy is down then the whole team can go down. The whole, the whole, the, when the top is gone, the bottom can fall, as they say. If, you, if something starts falling down, everything down there is going to fall too, right? So you got to be that type of leader that even though it's something go on with you, you train your team to be just as great and greater than you. That way nothing will fall. Even when something go down, they will catch it instead. And then that third one, like I said, is, is, is that knowing you know who you are and what their purpose is. So that's what I consider as great leadership and have that plan for them to to to, to carry on and, and go out there and be great. A lot of people want people to just stay up under them. That's not a great leader. A great leader going to tell them to go forth and walk into your destiny. <clears throat> yep, absolutely. And you know what? And this and I and this just came to me just now, but it's like when we raise our children, mm. you know, we raise them to be leaders, right? We want them to do better than us. Mm. We give them the different tools and skills and, and you know, nurture them and, and, and grow their emotional intelligence and, and just so on and so forth, right? Right. And eventually, the, the goal is for them to be self-sufficient. The yeah. goal is for them to, you know, go further than we did. You yeah. know, so I'm just saying, and this just came to me just now in this moment, but that's part of being a good leader. It's not just to... Um, you know, have somebody beneath you to quote unquote praise you or yes. make you look good. Because that's what they want now. Have you noticed that? Like, mm-hmm. I don't understand these new leaders. They want people, they acting like they're idols. And when you're acting like you idol, then you are worshiping mammon, not God. Because that's the only that's the only idol you should have is God. My children is not even my idol. My children are my children. My idol, the only idol I have is God. Like, I love music, don't get me wrong. And people are like, well, my idol, they got to watch what they speak out their tongue. Because that person is your great entertainer or your best, you know, your music, the um, your um, best music entertainment person. But they're not your idol. So, yeah, nowadays they want people to come by y'all them instead of giving all praises to God. So, I'm with you on that one, Jacqueline. <laughs> 
kumbaya. <laughs> oh, we <laughs> bad out here now. To me, I mean, I, it's a lot of people even walking away now because because they was like, this is not what I thought it was. And I said, I'm sorry, but don't give up because of there's some bad apples on the tree because there is some great leaders still out here. You just got to find the right one. You know, even with Believe Your Dreams, how I have grew it to an empire, right? And not only me, but me and my team have grew it. I try to take the I out because it's a we with us. So when you take that I out and you put that we in there, it sounds better. It lets someone know that she's not just talking about her leadership. She's talking about the whole team leadership. And then you start creating more leaders and more leaders and more leaders. But it's going to be a few that fall off that tree because even an apple have bad, you know, have bad apples on the tree and they fall off. But it's still so many that still be plentiful and abundantly constantly growing that tree and to have some amazing juicy fruit apples, right? So that's what you that's what you got to look at too is why do they want them, you to praise them instead of praising what we supposed to be praising? And that's praising God from giving us this opportunity to stand in this position to help others to break the chains off them and to snatch back their power and to believe. Because I tell people, believing is faith. You can't have faith if you don't believe and you can't believe if you don't have faith. That's right. They it goes together. So that's why everything I have, Jacqueline, start with believing your dreams because I had to realize that my faith relies in God, not that teacher that told me I couldn't do it, not those people that looked down on me and told me I was a product of my environment. No, I'm from that environment. I was born in that environment, but I was created from God. And I was, and that means that I'm a product of his. So we got to get in that mindset to teach people. I'm so sick of hearing that. I'm a product of that environment. And people stay stagnant. They stay pivot. Where they at because they thinking that they're a product of their environment and that they're supposed to be in these situations. So they're looking at what God can do to you when you walk out of that type of mindset. So as a man think and so is he. That's right. That's right. That is so, so powerful. Before you leave, I definitely want you to get an opportunity to tell them, you know, how to get in contact with you and if you, or not if, or what you have coming up. But before we move into that, could you share possibly some challenges that you may have had? And I know you mentioned about your health, um, but I think it's important, you know, part of being, hopefully being, you know, transparent and authentic, mm -hmm. because like you said, a lot of times, especially with social media, we see something like we see who you are and, you know, your empire that you have in 2022, but we don't know what 2000 looked like for you. So if you could just share some different um, obstacles, I guess, that, that you've had to overcome. Jacqueline, I was in the middle of my career after I started. I was living in Texas, right? And when I was writing my first book, I got so sick. Kind of found out my neuropathy had got worse. I found that I had degenerative disease of the spine, which meaning that the RA is so bad, rheumatoid arthritis was so bad that it's deteriorating my spine. It's no cure for that. Most everybody that have that, they either on a cane, they're on a rollator, or they're in a wheelchair. Unfortunately, I found out in 2013 that I had this illness um, where the illness poster had me because I don't have it. It has me. So with that being said is um, I was I found out that maybe that I would be in a wheelchair. They were saying maybe, maybe you know, two or three years, four years, you're going to be in a wheelchair. I watch how my um, arthritis. My rheumatoid arthritis started taking over my body. I was having flare-ups real bad and everything. So before you know, I ended up having some surgeries done on my stomach. Um, I found out that I had three spots on my stomach and everything. So I had to get, um, you know, treatments on that as well. So I end up going, writing that book and I was down. And my daughter said, mama, she was young then. You got to finish that book. She said, because you told me you were going to take me to Disney World. And I told her it did something to me when she did. She kept on trying to open my eyes up. And I couldn't keep my eyes open, Jacqueline, because I was on so much medication. If you're on 14 medication, it's hard for you to focus. It's hard for you to keep your mindset right. It's hard for you to do anything. I couldn't even hardly help my kids with my, their homework because I was on heavy medicated medicine and everything. So I told her, I said, you know what, baby? I said, I'm not going to only take you to Disney World. I'm going to move you by Disney World. And that's just what happened. We actually live 40 minutes from Disney World now. I live in Tampa Bay, and Orlando and Tampa Bay is only 40 to 45 minutes from each other, according on where you, um, um, according on to the traffic. And now she have an annual pass to go to Disney as much as she want to. 
But in the process of that, I falter. I had to, I lost my Range Rover, got repossessed. I end up couldn't um, keep on paying the credit cards I had because when you down to one income in a house and you got four kids, it get hefty. It get hard. And when your, I tell people all the time, your greatest wealth is your health. I don't care what nobody say, Jacqueline. Going through that situation there, I realized you can have all the money. In She'll be right back. She probably just got a phone call. But is it, oh my God, this, ladies, please, please. I want you to know that never give up. Always keep your vision in your mind. The way I see it, if you can dream it, if you can envision it, you can have it, right? The only thing that, a lot of times, the only thing that stands between you and your dreams is your belief in yourself. Do you truly believe that you can do it? Do you truly believe that you are worthy? Sorry about that. <laughs> it's like you was there one minute and you <laughs> All right, sis, go, go ahead. Hold on. You have to believe it. All right, ladies. Can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Can you hear me? Uh, okay, yes, I can now. You can hear me now? Yes. Yep. Okay, I don't know why I can't hear myself. Mm. I don't know what's going on. Okay, but as long as y'all can hear me, then I'm fine. Mm. So I'm, I apologize. I thought I had my phone on where it couldn't ring, but the enemy can't stop this because this is the part where I need to share with others. I share about the domestic violence all the time. I share about other things, but I never, ever hardly share about what went with, went with me with my medical history. So with that being said, I was on Humera shots, Jacqueline. Mm -hmm. I was on um, isocodone. I was on um, methotrexate, which methotrexate also helps people with cancer as well. But it's also for your rheumatoid arthritis and osteoarthritis, but it got to be severe. The meds, the pills weren't working so good. They had to put me on the medic, the, 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 the needle, on the biological medicine, on their specialty pharmacy had to send me out my Humera shots and my methotrexate. With them two together, the rest of the reservoir shots that was over seven thousand dollars worth of medication right there i had no other choice but to go and get some help to get me some help with my medication through the government again and that's something i promised myself i'd never get on again but see you never say what you won't ever get on again you get what i'm saying so i end up having to get some help with the medicaid right and get on my medicine and that wasn't it i was on simavastin for high cholesterol then all of a sudden be, being on all the medication all of a sudden i got hypertension i'm on um lisopril Lins, for for my um for hypertension then all of a sudden i had to take something for the neuropathy they had me on um gabapentin so you know just think about it. you on all those different medication and medication and medication to where I, I i felt like it was over for me i literally felt like it was over for me but guess what god said it ain't over and i asked him i said lord please get me off this bed anytime i got to the point where i couldn't bathe myself at that time he was my fiance he wasn't my husband i couldn't even bathe myself he had to help bathe me i couldn't even get out the bed for a few days i mm -hmm. said i gotta fight for me and my kids and that's just what i did i fought for my kids and i fought for others and now i'm down i'm off for 14 medication on three i got my career back together i started back a year i started healing my body i had to go do physical therapy i had to go through brain stem therapy, all type of um, therapy to get me back to normalcy to where I had to be. Now, I might not speak like you, Jacqueline. I might not speak like some other people, but thank God he brought me back to speak like I can, enough to break through the others. But then I started just um, staying in therapy to help myself with my back and everything now. I started becoming a wellness advocate. I've been with doTERRA since 2013. As of 2014, as a doTERRA wellness advocate, where I teach people how to heal their body naturally to get out some that synthetic medicine now am i'm not saying all synthetic medicine all synthetic medication don't help you no that's not what i'm saying but what i'm saying is it helped me but to get off of some of it and heal my body naturally lavender oil I started taking ambient to go to sleep i got that lavender oil and i put it on the bottom of my feet on the back of my neck and i was able to go to sleep and let me tell you something that frankincense and myrrh 
anything good enough for Jesus. The wise men, what did they get to Jesus? They gave him frankincense, myrrh, and gold. So I took that frankincense oil, and I took that myrrh oil, and I get, took my blessed oil that my apostle gave me, and I rubbed that stuff all over my body, Jacqueline. I started breathing better. I didn't have to get on a nebulizer as much as I had to with my asthma, one thing after another from all that medication. I took that frankincense and helped even with arthritis with, you know, rubbing on my back. It took down my inflammation and everything. So that's how I went off of 14 medication to three by turning over because uh, essential oils are aromatic compounds from plants, bark, trees, roots, and stems, which has come from who? Who created that? God. God created it. So that's what helped heal me was turning to the peppermint oil. Instead of using some big old medication for my stomach, I turned to the peppermint oil and the peppermint helps me with my stomach and the interjection and the acid reflux. So it started, I just started healing my body like never before and I put my trust in God because all those oils are actually in the Bible. Cassia oil, all the rosemary oil. My hair started coming out from the from the blood pressure pills. I started taking that rosemary oil, putting it in my hair, and my hair started growing back. Girl, God is so good. I'm sorry for taking too long on that part. But that's how I snatched back my power back, by, by healing myself naturally, even though I faltered. I lost some things. But it don't matter. It doesn't matter what you lose. When you got God on your side, he'll bring it back more and better and abundantly. Now here I am helping other people become seven-figure women, seven figure men around here by creating their own TV shows, by telling their story, getting on the stand and telling their story. The Believe in Your Dreams tour is in effect. We'll be in New York next month. We'll be in Paris this year. We'll be in Dubai this year, Chicago, New Orleans. So I learned that what you what you do in life is keep believing even when you down. Even when I felt like I was suffocating, Jacqueline, I felt like I was in a water just down at the bottom suffocating, but I had to grab them pearls. Because at the bottom of that ocean, Jacqueline, remember there's pearls, right? It's pearls mm -hmm. down there. And pearls is in a class of their own. They don't have to be like a diamond cut or anything. So that's what I did and to heal my and heal myself. But that was one of the worst traumatic experiences I went through when I had that big health problem. And then turn around and went through COVID. And I, my husband thought I was going to pass away. And my kids thought I was going to pass away, you know, last year in September. While I'm in the hospital from COVID, they telling my husband they might have to put me on a ventilator. My kids call my phone. Mama, mama, daddy just died. You can't leave to my other three kids' father. Dad passed away. To pass away where I'm in the hospital fight for my life. So imagine what kind of traumatic experience my children went through. And I knew I had to fight. And I ended up catching lung damage. And I got right now, I got scar tissue in my lungs from what COVID did. But that's not going to stop me from speaking. And to God stop breathing my nostrils, I'm going to keep going. And I need everybody else to do the same, too. So God bless you all. And thank you so much, Jacqueline, for having me here. Ooh, this has been this has been so powerful. See that? Now, you you went out for a minute and came back, came right on back in there and brought it. <laughs> thank you so much. I appreciate your honesty and your transparency. I had no idea. I know I, I knew you had went through some health issues but i had no idea the magnitude and I, I mean that is just so awesome that how you just you you know what queen you are just oh thank you you are thank such you. an inspiration you are such an inspiration so ladies with that being said okay do not give up and this is what i was saying earlier um before when she had left us for a moment is that don't give up you have come too far you have come yes. too far to give up. Anything is possible. If you believe it, if you think it, you can do it. It's not going to happen overnight. But with consistency and faith and the right network, you can do it. You can bring, you can manifest the business and the lifestyle of your dreams. I want to let you know as well, make sure you check out all of the other exclusive interviews as well. I mean, each each individual, each queen come, brings something different to the table. And we talk about a different aspect of leadership, right? And that way you can begin to refine mm -hmm. your leadership abilities. If you are already operating in a leadership role, you can refine those abilities. We all have strengths and we all have areas mm -hmm. that we work in. So I want you to work on those areas and be able to become the best leader that you can be. Because the better you lead, the better or the um, the further you'll be able to take your empire, 
okay, and be able to prepare for generations to come mm -hmm. so that they can also um, be able to continue the legacy, right? And that's what we want. So again, I'm your host, Jacqueline Kabai Harrison, and you have joined us for A Queen's Roundtable Leadership Symposium, which is the number one platform to provide personal, professional, and leadership development for African-American women in business. What we want, our hope, is to help you scale your business, to help you grow, to help you create a legacy. So thank you again, Dr. Peters, so much for being on the show and bringing it and you know sharing with us the, the good tips and tools. So I'll say this, is there anything maybe in about a minute that you might want to let them know, um, I guess, where to follow you, um, how to find you, how to connect with you. And is there any thought that you want to leave the audience with? Yes. And I'm sorry, Jacqueline. Um, I'm, I'm, I don't know why I'm having tech problems. You can hear me. But ever since I answered my phone, I couldn't hear you. You know, um, I, oh, yeah. for some reason, um, it's not. Okay. You want me to come out and try to come back in, like leave and come back in and but uh, but yes um but if you want to i can like leave my information so that's, pro that's probably what you had probably asked me and i um uh, to, to reach to my website is www.believeinyourdreamstv.com that's www.believeinyourdreamstv.com also my um email address is www.believeinyourdreamsproductions at gmail.com um you can reach me at facebook www.facebook slash love l u l u v power p o w e r and respect r e s p e c t i am believing your dreams tv on instagram so anytime you need some life coaching anytime you need some believing in yourself coaching anytime you need some snatch back your power coaching and you know and the power collaboration with women is amazing even though dr nakia has her own tv network and her own publishing company and her own magazine i do too but we work together jacqueline has her own tv show on there i do too but we work together because the simple fact is it's enough for everybody and if everybody just get that type of mindset that you can still collaborate with other people and still do the same thing we'll be around here rocking this world so amazing amazingly rocking this world so that's what i love about you y'all great collaborators and collaboration out trumps competition any single day and it's so good when i see all of us around here just helping others and no matter we do the same thing because it's okay to do the same thing you think there's not you know walmart and target and um and other companies do the same things but you know what they sell clothes too and they sell uh, um colgate and you know food and everything too and you think they don't have big executive meetings together they still sit in the same boardrooms and at the same table together and i like that jacqueline because you got the round table leadership and i got come take a seat at the table where we all eat i'm not releasing it until september but it's where we all eat and we just don't eat food together at that table we eat in inspiration together we eat encouragement together we eat prayers together we pray and break the enemies off each other and build each other up so that's why they said i'll eat because even though we might be eating we're talking about ways to make be ambitiously and and strong and motivated so i thank you so so much for having me here you have an amazing platform thank you so much dr peters all right ladies well thank you for tuning in um Definitely reach out to Dr. Peters, connect with her, connect with me on either Facebook at Realizing Your Potential. The number is one, two, three. That's my business Facebook page. Or either you can connect with me on LinkedIn at Jacqueline Kaba Harrison or on YouTube. Um, yeah, so that's LinkedIn, YouTube and uh, Facebook. All right. So thanks again. And make sure you check out the other expert uh, interviews and I'll talk to you again soon. All right. Goodbye, everybody. Bye-bye. God bless you all. And remember, anything is possible for those that believe. Make it rock. Beat, beat, beat. Become breakthrough, unstoppable success because the bus is rolling.